Hi everyone, my name is Hadi and I'm a journalist and communication specialist. I believe that as Africans, we should be in charge of every narrative coming out of Africa. We have a lot of positive stories to tell and share with the world, and I'm determined to use my platform to make that a reality. This is why I've teamed up with the Fata Network to bring you a brand new show, Stories from the Continent, every Saturday at 4 p.m. Do make sure you join us. There will be lots of fun, informative, and impactful conversation. Hello everyone, Salaam Alaikum. I hope you're all well. Uh, my name is Hadi, welcome to Stories from the Continent. I'm so thrilled to be back and spending my Saturdays with you guys. Uh, as always, every week we bring you a celebration and appreciation of African community leaders and really just people making a difference in their fields. Uh, this Saturday's story will focus on mental health and changing the discourse in African communities. Uh, my guest, Ngai Masise is a psychosocial trauma professional working with the TRRC. Uh, and for people that aren't familiar with it, it is the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission in the Gambia. It has been founded as a result of political crimes and human rights abuses allegedly carried out by the former Gambian government. Ngaima's work focuses on understanding the causes and consequences of trauma and providing support to trauma survivors. Ngaima, welcome and thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, so Ngaima, my hope for today's conversation on mental health and mental illness is that uh, it has an impact, it has a true impact because we've seen that millions of people people suffer due to ignorance, negligence, and of course stigma uh, attached to mental illness. We don't talk about it. And as a result, a lot of people are left suffering in silence. So as someone whose job is helping people heal, what does mental health mean? Let's, let, let's start with the basics. What does it mean? So I think I'll start with the WHO um, definition of mental health. So the World Health Organization defines mental health as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes he's of her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. So essentially, we're talking about your mind, your thoughts, your behavior. So mental health has to do with your thoughts and your behavior. So your ability to really... Um, function on a day-to-day -day basis normally without, for example, staying at home and going to work or having hallucinations or not wanting to hang out with people, that essentially encompasses mental health. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and Naima, before we get into uh, the discussion, tell us about your, tell us your backstory, who you are, where you're from and your studies. So, well, um, that's actually kind of hard, <laughs> but I'll try. So um, as you all know, my name is Ngai Masise. Um, I'm currently a psychosocial trauma professional at the TRRC. Um, the reason why I got into psychology is kind of, um, if I can call it a weird way, because I actually started off as um, with medicine. I wanted to become a medical doctor mm -hmm. and I was studying for medicine. And then I took um, psychology, an introduction to psychology course. And I found it very fascinating because it's different. It had to do with how I think how I behave, why I'm behaving the way I do, why people behave the way they do. And when your thoughts or your behavior doesn't really um, think with everybody else what the, what the causes are, I'm intrigued by that. So I was like, you know what? Forget, um, forget medicine. Let me go into the mind instead. Let me forget, the body. <laughs> forget about the body, kind of. Let me go into the mind. And that's how I actually got into psychology. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and mental health, of course. And I realized that as well in the Gambia, we don't really talk about mental health because that's why I didn't even know about mental health. Because mm -hmm. when I was studying uh, for medicine, for me, the whole idea of health was just the body. I didn't really think about psychology per se or that much because it's not something I've taught in our schools or it wasn't taught in our schools at that, that time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I get into this, like this is something that's in the Gambia because we don't talk mental health. We don't talk psychology. There's nothing like that. And when I came back to the Gambia, it was so hard for me because there was literally nothing, nowhere for me to actually go and work in. 
because mm-hmm. they're, because you know like organizations um hospitals don't really didn't really consider mental health so it was a struggle for me i literally got into depression which is ironic because i didn't really have anything to go into mm-hmm. yes um um but over the years and well eventually i decided to go into um into lecturing because for me that was the only i actually wanted to be a lecturer as well but that was one way i could actually you know help talk about psychology help inculcate psychology into into the Gambia and then I decided to go on to do to start an organization which is which is called organization for psychosocial innovation and we deal mm-hmm. with trauma we deal with mental health trying to help people understand what mental health is if you need help with mental health issues as well we also try to help you as well mm-hmm. um, how you said that uh, it was difficult to find a job uh, that that had something to do with what we studied which is psychology in the Gambia uh, and just the lack of kind of awareness around mental health which we'll, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit uh, later on currently though you're a psychosocial trauma professional what exactly is that so psychosocial means that um, we're not just dealing for example with the mind so you know technically speaking when it comes to psychology we deal with the mind and the behavior but when it comes to psychosocial we go beyond that. So we're trying to see how um, other factors around your thoughts and behavior affects you. So we're looking at the context of the individual. So for example, your society, the community you live in, your society, your culture, your um, social economic status, how does that contribute to your mental health? So um, for example, somebody might be very depressed and that depression actually comes or stems from poverty. So the fact that I live in this house and you know the roof keeps flying off, I can't pay for my kids to go to school or it's really hard, I'm struggling, I'm constantly thinking about when next I'm gonna put a meal on the table. That is how we really, um, so it's still mental health, but we're trying to see or trying to attack it from different, from a context point of view. So what are the different mm-hmm. factors that make up an individual that contribute to their mental health or that affect their mental health? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Emma, I know the work you do is incredibly confidential, but also very important uh, for people watching. There are people watching that aren't familiar with the TRRC, and I think that none of us know what goes on behind closed doors. What can you tell us about the types of mental health or trauma uh, that the victims or survivors of these alleged crimes and human rights abuses are facing? So when it comes to um, victims of trauma, it's really the same, whether it's the TRRC or us at the TRRC, right. they, most of the time they go through traumatic stress. Now, it depends, of course, on how much they affect it. And this is also where psychosocial comes in as well, because we're all affected differently. So one particular event might be quite traumatic to me, mm-hmm. but it will not be traumatic to you. So the way I'm affected will be different from the way you're affected. But nevertheless, it's still a traumatic event because it does cause anxiety. It does cause emotional disturbances. So I have emotional responses or emotional reactions. I'm in shock and confused. It can lead to certain mental disorders as well. So some people might suffer from anxiety. And of course, we have post-traumatic stress. Now, um, most of the people that we have that come here, not all of them, of course, but some of them do have some issues, some you know traumatic stress that that, that they still carry because of of the human right abuses that they went through, because of the traumatic events that they experience, and it's understandable, of course. So we really try to help them to heal. So they're not they've not healed, but they're on the path to heal. So guiding them so that they can really better understand what they're going through, to understand that all those traumatic responses or normal responses, because really when you go through trauma, it's the event that's abnormal. So your responses are very normal. It's your body telling you that something is not right. So we try to get them to understand that all of these different responses, everything that you've, you've gone through is actually very normal, provided or considering what you've gone through. So we try to really guide them, at least in our for the psychosocial support unit. Yeah, and you mentioned about the lack of uh, uh, psychologists in, in, in the Gambia. Is there enough help, Ngaima, to help uh, ease the, the psychological trauma for each person? Do you have a team or is it just yourself? No, we do have a team. So there is currently um, three of us um, mm-hmm. that are Gambian and there's one, um, one of us from South Africa. 
She's a psychologist and she's here as technical assistant from um, CSVR. So in total, there is four of us. Mm -hmm. I can say five, one of us in these, but yeah, let me just say five. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we are a team and um, we really, we, we, are, we are a great team, I can, I can say that. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, uh, Ngaima. Now speaking kind of more broadly around mental health and mental illness, uh, as a psychologist, are there any symptoms or what are some of the things that we should look out for? So it really depends on what the situation is, mm -hmm. because for different mental health issues, they manifest differently. Right. Um, Technically speaking, you should have, um, technically speaking, there should be a, a difference in your thought, in the way you think. Mm -hmm. There should be difference in, um, there should be difference in your behavior. So for example, if you um, withdraw from people, if you um, don't like to be around people, that's behavioral. There's mm -hmm. also physical, so losing appetite, so mm -hmm. not to eat. So for example, insomnia, either sleeping too much, Changes the sleep pattern. So either sleeping too much or sleeping very little or disturbances in sleep. Right. Um, there's also your thoughts. So how you think maybe um, you, it, and this again depends on the issue. So for example, with anxiety, you might really get scared easily. So you worry mm -hmm. a lot as well. So with depression, there's, it's more of negative thoughts. So you think, um, you know, you're not good enough. There's a sense of hopelessness. And then you have other things like hallucinations for psychotic illnesses. So maybe you you see or hear things. You have the delusions as well, delusions of grandeur, where you think you are something you're not. So it really depends on the issue. Their mental health is is why it's just like physical health. Yeah. So when you see changes in thought patterns, in behavioral patterns, in emotional patterns, so you cry a lot. For example, you laugh a lot um, with your physical um, physical patterns as well. Mm -hmm. then you might there might be cause for concern and mostly how we really um if i can put it just broadly is if there is a disruption in your daily functioning mm -hmm. so generally or naturally we wake up we go to work we go to school we have things that we do but if you find it if you find it really difficult to go around your daily functions or do your daily functions mm -hmm. then that that might be a sign that something is wrong somewhere so whenever somebody talks to you break down and cry Mm -hmm. you don't want to be around people mm -hmm. you're hearing things you're seeing things you're feeling things then mm -hmm. you know that's a sign that something might there's something might be wrong somewhere and you may need to say um look for professional help mm -hmm. and sometimes you can even if you that, that's a, that's another thing with the gambia or with africa there's not that awareness on how to spot early signs yes. so you can yes. do something about it because mm -hmm. if you can spot the signs early there are many protective factors, many things you can do to actually help yourself so that you don't really, it doesn't really get worse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's really interesting you say that because what we find is it's either you don't spot the signs early, you're not aware that this is actually happening, or you are aware and, and people just don't, I guess it's not a priority for some people and, you know, it just gets progressively worse. And before you're getting help, then it's already, you know, it can be prevented at, at an earlier stage, let's say. Uh, I think for me, Ngaima, something that's always intrigued me is, can it happen to just anyone or is it hereditary? Like those genetics have a role uh, to play. Yeah, it does. So when it comes to mental health, um, somebody having a mental health issue, there's so many factors. So, you know, when it comes to physical health for certain illnesses, you can say, for example, malaria is a mosquito that feeds you, so now you have malaria, right? <laughs> So if it's diabetes, for example, it has to do with your insulin regulation, sugar, what, what, what not. But when it comes to mental health, it's very different. Mm -hmm. So there are many different factors that can cause mental, mental disturbances or mental challenges, mental health challenges to people. One, of course, is genetics. Mm -hmm. So if your mom or your dad has a particular mental disorder or predisposition to have a mental illness or mental issue, it doesn't mean that you will have it. But it does mean that you have a high risk of having it, especially if you put in an environment that triggers it. Mm -hmm. And that's where the environmental aspect comes into it. So if you're in a very high stress environment and you already have a gene for depression, then chances are that gene might be triggered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are also social factors. So 
you know, the environment you find yourself in, the culture, it also plays a role. Um, your behavior, the way you think. So if you tend to think negatively, and then you also have the gene for depression, you might end up, you know, going down that, that, that lane. So you might have a couple of people with depression. One can be genetic, mm -hmm. genetics. Another one could possibly be environmental. And that is why it's actually a little harder to treat mental illnesses or mental health issues than it is when it comes to physical illnesses. Mm -hmm. Because the cause and factors are varied. There are a wide variety of factors that really cause um, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, looking at the situation in the Gambia, uh, WHO figures show that 120,000 people in the Gambia have some sort of mental illness uh, and require treatment, but also almost 90% of those with a mental disorder have no access to the treatment they need. Uh, it's a huge number, Ngaima. It is. What's your reaction to this data? Um, obviously, it's saddening because um, you look at other countries. I mean, mental health is an issue everywhere worldwide, yes. but then in Africa and Gambia, it's even it's a bigger issue mm -hmm. because the government doesn't really um, pay much attention, doesn't prioritize mental health as it does physical health, as it does like communicable diseases. So the priority, the, the strategies they'll put forward for things like HIV, for, for things like malaria, they don't do the same for mental health, mental health illnesses or mental issues, sorry, mental disorders. And because of that, we find out that we suffer. So the government really needs to do a little bit more, prioritize <laughs> mental health, because then we don't have access when it comes to access, because I would like to say that when it comes to the camp, maybe 100,000, maybe actually we have only three psychologists, if I can put it that way. So if you divide the whole population, it means one third of that population for one psychologist. <laughs> yeah. In other countries, you'll have, they'll say, for example, there's one psychologist to 100,000 people. Mm. And the Gambia is not the same because we have like only three psychologists. Mm -hmm. You understand? So this figure is disheartened, but I'm not surprised, of course, especially considering also this, the, the, the social situation, the, the way the countries, we just came from a dictatorship rule as well. Yes. That kind of environment is very much, you know, triggering when it comes to mental health issues, if I can put mm -hmm. it that way. I think for me, something else that comes to mind when I think of access uh, to treatment is also the urban-rural uh, divide in the Gambia. Uh, right. I remember when we had Dr. Ismail Assisi on the show, we talked about this challenge in terms of education. And I wonder if the same applies in terms of mental health. Is it easier to get help within the city? And also, how can we reach uh, the other part of society? Right, so when it comes to the access to mental health, I think there's, there's a whole bunch of factors as well that really come into consideration. And um, as much as some people are aware in the urban areas of mental health issues, mm -hmm. we still have a huge, like a huge number that are not really aware, or even if they're aware, they do not really consider it per se, or did not really take it seriously, or they ignore it. So, and then there's also the fact that you know, we have too few professionals, mental health professionals. Mm -hmm. So we have more psychiatric nurses mm -hmm. and um, most of them are based in Tanka Tanka. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not too sure about this, but um, I would like to believe that most of them are based in, in Tanka Tanka and RVTH. I'm not too sure about the, the, the rural areas. Mm -hmm. And considering the fact that in the urban areas, a lot of people are not, there's limited awareness of mental health, mm -hmm. mental health issues and mental illness symptoms. Mm -hmm. My guess is when it comes to the rural areas, there's even more limited awareness. Even less, yes. Yes, so um, there's even less limited awareness, of course. So if we have this issue, that means that in the rural areas, there's more stigma. People mm -hmm. are less likely to talk about their issues. People are less likely to seek help, of course, because after all, they don't even know what mental health is. So if I don't know what mental health is, how can I go look for help? How can I ask for help? And that's why awareness is very important because when there's awareness, when I know that these symptoms, when this happens to me, it's X, Y, and Z. So that means I have to go to this place to go seek help. It's so much easier. But when I don't know what these symptoms are, it's easy for me to just, you know, to say it's, oh, it's um, Ginella or it's witchcraft or the Maligay. Mm -hmm. We look for things that are familiar. Mm -hmm. 
So there's that problem, of course. So of course, if I don't know what I'm having, it's I'm not going to look for health services to go to. Mm -hmm. So there's the, there's the issue of few trained mental health professionals. There's the issue of poor access to health services. Mm -hmm. and of course, there's the issue of limited awareness and mm -hmm. there's community stigma, of course, because if somebody has um, a serious mental health, mental illness, what do we do? We shun the person, mm -hmm. the family ostracizes them or they hide them somewhere. Mm -hmm. So all of these issues really affect access. Mm -hmm. Tell us, tell us I, I want you to talk more, uh, Ngaima, about uh, stigma. It is, like you said, a huge challenge uh, in fighting for the mentally ill and kind of changing the discourse around it. Uh, please give us, uh, share with us more specific examples into what stigma looks like. You, I know you've already said, uh, you know, that some people believe those in mental health conditions uh, have been like bewitched, then uh, colleague, whatever, and it's treated uh, almost as a spiritual problem uh, and uh, what is the what is the problem with this way of thinking Naima? it's a big problem because yeah. like I said before if you believe that your mental illness or somebody's mental illness your family members mental illness is because of you know witchcraft or you know somebody did something to you obviously you don't go seek help where you're supposed to go seek help you will and the thing the thing as well is People, will live in, people living with mental illnesses, they're frequently stigmatized, they're shunned, they're excluded from mainstream society. Mm -hmm. So, and because of that, they're also subjected to human rights abuses. Mm -hmm. So now this person has a mental health issue, they're whipped, they're chained, they're tied up, you know, they don't given proper food. So you have all these issues that come, that arise because of, those are spe specific examples of stigma. Mm -hmm. And these arise because people don't understand what mental health or what mental illness is. Because mm -hmm. mental illness is the broad term used for different mental disorders. So people mm -hmm. don't really understand what mental illness is. And because of that, they, do, they will commit human rights abuse. Mm -hmm. So human rights abuse is not just, you know, locking somebody up and torturing them. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody, has, if somebody has a mental illness, they also have, they, they, also, they, also, they, also need their, they also need their basic human rights to be respected. They need to be provided with food. They need, to, they need to have shelter. They need to have a house to live in, a clean house. They need a clean space. If they're able to, um, to go to school, they, they should go to school. If they're able to go to work, they should be allowed to go to work. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, in our society, because of what we don't understand mental illness, the way we behave actually causes the disease to get worse or the disorder to get worse, sorry. So it exacerbates it. So if I just, for example, if I have certain, certain symptoms of schizophrenia and people start mocking me or, you know, my family shuns me or asks me to leave, it just gets worse mm -hmm. because now I have no protective factors. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's interesting to bring family into it because we see uh, that, you know, the human rights abusers uh, sometimes happen in the hands of their own families, you know, and, uh, and what's interesting also is that I think this is not only a case for the Gambia, it seems to be uh, a problem across uh, the continent. Uh, but the first part of my question, Gaima, I'm sorry, I asked really long questions, uh, was that please give us more specific uh, examples into what stigma looks like around uh, mental health. Yeah, so I already gave specific examples. So for example, locking, I mean, tying somebody up, not mm -hmm. giving them food, mm -hmm. that's, that's stigma. And stigma can also be internalized. Mm -hmm. So when it's internalized, what happens is I will not go seek treatment for myself. So I'm stigmatizing myself. So stigma is not just the individual, somebody, um, the, somebody's behavior towards another person. Mm -hmm. It's my behavior towards myself. Mm -hmm. So all of these are examples of stigma. That can also be as a result of societal stigma. You think you can't speak out about it. So of course you're going to uh, internalize it. Yeah, of course. Because there's, society thinks mental illness is you know, something that is not worth talking about. If you're mentally ill, we have to lock you up. We have to tie you up. We don't give you food. We drive you out of the house. So I have these symptoms. I can't talk about it. It means this is what's going to happen to me. I'm going to be locked up. So in effect, what happens is I actually make it worse for myself. And I find that I'm going down a very watery slope, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. So now the disease actually, the disorder actually progresses because mm -hmm. I have no help and I'm, and I'm actually thinking the worst for myself because the mind is a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
so as we kind of have already said, there's been evidence of abuse in some mental health institutions uh, in very developed countries like Ghana. And the issue, uh, fortunately, it's not isolated. Uh, you know, there's things like overcrowding and neglect in the institutions. Ngaima, can you tell us what the situation is in the mental health institutions in the Gambia? Hi everyone, my name is Hadi and I'm a journalist and communication specialist. I believe that as Africans, we should be in charge of every narrative coming out of Africa. We have a lot of positive stories to tell and share with the world, and I'm determined to use my platform to make that a reality. This is why I've teamed up with the FATA Network to bring you a brand new show, Stories from the Continent, every Saturday at 4 p.m. Do make sure you join us. There will be lots of fun, informative, and impactful conversation. Hi everyone, my name is Hadi and I'm a journalist and communication specialist. I believe that as Africans, we should be in charge of every narrative coming out of Africa. We have a lot of positive stories to tell and share with the world, and I'm determined to use my platform to make that a reality. This is why I've teamed up with the FATA Network to bring you a brand new show, Stories from the Continent, every Saturday at 4 p.m. Do make sure you join us. There will be lots of fun, informative, and impactful conversation. Hi everyone, my name is Hadi and I'm a journalist and communication specialist. I believe that as Africans, we should be in charge of every narrative coming out of Africa. We have a lot of positive stories to tell and share with the world, and I'm determined to use my platform to make that a reality. This is why I've teamed up with the FATA Network to bring you a brand new show, Stories from the Continent, every Saturday at 4 p.m. Do make sure you join us. There will be lots of fun, informative, and impactful conversation. Hi everyone, my name is Hadi and I'm a journalist and communication specialist. I believe that as Africans, we should be in charge of... My mom's calling me to say <laughs> that the thing went... Manzorlen Manoye. Every narrative coming out of Africa. We have a lot of positive stories to tell and... Hi everyone, uh, I'm so sorry. My enormous apologies uh, for the technical difficulties we're having, uh, but we will get right back uh, into it. We've got Ngaima still on. And uh, Ngaima, before we'd, it cut off, we were talking about uh, the situation in the mental health uh, institutions in the Gambia. I'm not familiar uh, with how many there are, uh, but I was saying that uh, in other very developed countries in, in Africa, we've seen uh, evidence of abuse uh, and gross kind of human rights abuses. Uh, tell us what the situation is like in the Gambia. Right. So like I said, I have not I don't really go there for say, so I'm not really very acquainted with how things work. Mm -hmm. I have I have heard horror stories, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and I'm, I'm not surprised, but to be honest as well, from what I've seen, I feel like we can really do better. Mm -hmm. We can do way better because um, we when, when somebody's mentally ill, you need to provide them with an environment that's 
that really helps them, mm -hmm. you know, because some of the environments that we put our mentally ill people in, it, it's, it's not very encouraging and doesn't really help them to get better because some people, because some people don't want to go there, even though they know that they have issues and they have problems, but they don't want to go there because they already, the stigma as well. Mm -hmm. And one thing you, you asked me to mention specific instances of, instances of stigma. Mm -hmm. And one, one of them is actually the fact that our government does not invest. Mm -hmm. That actually is a stigma. So the mm -hmm. fact that our government does not really put out resources for men, because they, they're saying that it's not worth, take, they're not worth taking care of. They should mm -hmm. just be left to, mm -hmm. you know, with whatever it is that, that they, that they, that they get. Yeah. And that's, that's a serious concern. So people, you will tell somebody, oh, if somebody tells you, okay, I have X, Y, and Z issue. I am not feeling too good. I am hearing this. So I'm seeing this. So, you know, my mood has been whatever. And you tell them, go to Tanka Tanka. And they're like, no, I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. And that actually is because of the fact that the environment is not an environment that, that's inviting. Mm -hmm. So if I had a mental health, a mental health issue, a mental illness, I will not want to go to Tanka Tanka, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Mm -hmm. And that actually says all about the institution. Mm -hmm. So whether they abuse them there, I'm not aware of it. I'm not going to lie, but I know that from what I've seen, it could be way better. We mm -hmm. could do way better and we could provide, we could, we could invest a little bit more when it comes to the, because mental health is not just behavior. It's not just, you know, your thoughts or, your emotions, it's also the economy. Mm -hmm. Because okay. if I have a mental health issue, if you have a mental health issue, it means that it's my productivity goes down. So the years lost because of my, because they, there's years of productivity lost because of my mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And that's what the government or the country doesn't realize. Mm -hmm. So poverty, so it's like a cycle actually. So I have a mental health issue, I'm not going to work more family there's economic there's economic problems there as well there's financial problems so it's not just my behavior it's not just my thoughts it's and that's where the psychosocial aspect comes in as well it's the society it's the economy it's all of these different things mm -hmm. even the goals the developmental goals a country cannot develop if its people have mental health issues because i cannot go to work if i have mental health issues Mental illness is the extreme, but even just mental health issues, I cannot go to work if I have mental health issues. If I am depressed, I do not want to go to work. If no. I go to work, I am not going to be effective. I'm not going to be productive. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is why governments need to take this more seriously, because if we expect to develop, we need to actually invest in, our men, in the mental health of our, if, of our country. Mm -hmm. I, I am so glad and, and so pleased that you actually brought up the government. I actually reached out to the Ministry of Health uh, before this show. I wanted to get a statement from them, uh, not only to say what are they doing in terms of mental health and mental illness, uh, but also how much of the national health budget uh, is spent or, or, or on, on, on mental health. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't hear anything back. Uh, I get uh, understandably, of course, with the whole COVID uh, situation, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm hoping to hear something back from them. And that, that is something that I will uh, post out once uh, I do. Uh, Ngaima, we've seen more kind of extreme cases of mental illnesses where you have people roaming the streets. There's a lot of them when, you're, when, when you go uh, back home, when you're in the Gambia. Uh, how, how, how should we react to, to people like this? Because of course, with the lack of uh, awareness and the lack of, uh, uh, I, I don't know a word, um, but just kind of lack of us knowing how to deal with uh, with mental illness and support people with it. Uh, you know, you have like children throwing stones at, uh, at them, and you're, you know, you're shunned from society. How, how can we help people like this? I think awareness plays a big role. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like our country or the government really underestimates the impact of awareness or the weight of awareness. And it's not just a few programs here and there. It has to be continuous. It has to infiltrate every sector of our nation. So mm -hmm. mothers, fathers, adults, you know, young ones, everyone needs to understand what mental health is, what mental illness is, the implications of our behaviors. Because when we throw stones at these people, we're really just making it worse for them. 
-hmm. Because the thing about mental, mental health or mental illness is when you have protective factors, so your family, society, um, proper access to healthcare, it actually slows the progression of the mental illness. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, and it also allows you to know if you know, if I know that when I have a mental health issue, I know where to go to, I know where I can get help to make it it doesn't make it seem as nightmarish as as it is mm -hmm. so i feel like we need to do we need to, we need to do a lot of awareness reason in our in our country in our communities about people with mental illnesses about mental health mm -hmm. in schools as well we need to have for example um a mental health curriculum because mm -hmm. if kids understand what mental health is what mental illness is they are less likely to throw stones at people with mental illness they are they're more likely to actually be compassionate towards them Mm -hmm. And the thing is, um, they say people with mental illness are aggressive, but they're not aggressive. They mm -hmm. react to what you do. So obviously, I'm a, if I don't have any problems. If you throw a stone at me, I will react back. So mm -hmm. obviously, if you throw a stone at someone with mental illness, they will, they will also react. So it's not a matter of the fact that they have mental illness. It's, it's mm -hmm. actually just a human right violation. Because if, mm -hmm. if you throw a stone at me, I will react. I will not just stand there and stare at you. So you don't expect them to do the same as well. And until you have things that are disturbing them. And I like, I like to give this example. Um, a, a study was made where they, they gave people like a sort of, um, I, forget, I don't know if it's a mic, earphone or whatever, and they had to hear voices. And this was just for, to get people to understand what it's like to live with schizophrenia, hearing your own voice like a loudspeaker in your head. And a lot of people actually changed their perception of schizophrenia because of that. So these are the kinds of awareness and things we can actually incorporate here. So we can look at studies that have been done across the world and contextualize it to see how we can best help our people, how we can create awareness, how we can help our people with mental illnesses. Because I might not understand fully what it's, what it's like to have schizophrenia, what it's like to have bipolar, but if somebody gives me an inkling so that I understand what it's like, I'm more likely to empathize. And at least if I can't empathize, I can sympathize with them. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I couldn't agree more. I definitely, uh, as you've said, it's a collective effort. And I even think, you know, things like technology and tech experts in the Gambia, this is where they can come into it and, and you know, just see how we can use technology to kind of fill that gap in even things like response and, and personnel. Uh, but very quickly, Ngaima, before we go, in terms of help, uh, I know you said there's not much, but what is available? Is there a website to point people to? Where, where do where do you turn for help yeah that's a hard question um mm -hmm. the, the good thing is we have a couple of organizations that are actually trying when it comes to mental health so there's mm -hmm. my organization which is which is organization for psychosocial innovation we have various platforms on different on twitter on instagram on facebook so it's opi gambia you have others like um peace of mind i believe mm -hmm. there is um forward for you Yes. So they have in their own different ways when it comes to mental health. Mm -hmm. um, I know first we have, um, we, we just had a psychosocial trauma clinic mm -hmm. and that's for both trauma and mental health. Mm -hmm. And we have counselors with us. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have any mental health issue, um, we do an intake, we do assessment to see what the problem is and the best course of action. Do you need therapy, do you need counseling? Or is it more of a psychosocial issue where it has to do with legal stuff or physical stuff or economic, social stuff, we look into those things as well. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, um, there's a dearth when it comes to mental health services, mm -hmm. but I believe if, if we come together, if we do a collective effort, we, we should be able to do something at least slowly. I, I believe it's just baby steps going there. Mm -hmm. But if you reach out to these different organizations, mm -hmm. um, hopefully there's a little bit of something they can do for you. Obviously, you might find yourself on a wait list, like I said before, because we don't have a lot of psychologists. We have like about two or three. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to also do something called um, task shifting. So something I'm working on with my organization, which is trying to, um, um, how should I say this? Like not empower, but train social workers mm -hmm. so that they have experience, so that they have a little bit more experience and um, expertise when it comes to offering counseling because that's something that has been done in other countries as well because 
it's not just the Gambia, it's in Africa. I mean, we're worse off compared to places like South Africa and Nigeria because they have more psychologists. Mm -hmm. But even them, that's what they're doing. So they're task shifting where they're training other healthcare workers who are not mental health professionals um, to be able to do counseling, for example, to be able to do um, small forms of therapy. And that's what we're trying to do in the organization so that when people come in, we're able to give that help as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ngaima. Uh, so to everyone watching, just to kind of reiterate what Ngaima has said, uh, she has an organization, OPI Gambia. Uh, I know as well, like you said, a charity uh, that helps as well and everything is confidential, uh, is forward for you. Uh, all of OPI as well as forward for you is on social media. Um, thank you everybody for watching. My hope uh, is that this is a step in the di right direction and to anybody suffering please get help. Uh, sometimes I think all it takes is just talking to the right person uh, and to those already getting help. Uh, I wish you enormous health. Uh, thank you again, Gaima, for your contribution and for all your hard work. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you all. Right See you next Bye. weekend. Thank you. Share with the world and I'm determined to use my platform to make that a reality. This is why I've teamed up with the Fata Network to bring you a brand new show, Stories from the Continent, every Saturday at 4 p.m. Do make sure you join us. There will be lots of fun, informative and impactful conversation.